Dennis the Menace initially released in the United Kingdom as Dennis to avoid confusion with an similarly named character is a 1993 live-action American family comedy film based on the Hank Ketchum comic strip of the same name. It, however, is not the first live-action Dennis the Menace film, that was Dennis the Menace, Dinosaur Hunter, which premiered on television in 1987. The film was directed by Nick Castle, written and produced by John Hughes, and distributed by Warner Brothers, which released it under its family entertainment banner. It concerns the misadventures of a mischievous child Mason Gamble with a cowlick and a grin who wreaks havoc on his next-door neighbor, George Wilson Walter Matow, usually hangs out with his friends, Joey Kellen Hathaway and Margaret Wade Amy Sikossets, and is followed everywhere by his dog, Ruff. The film also features a cameo appearance by Jeannie Russell who was a cast member on the original television show. A direct-to-video sequel called Dennis the Menace Strikes Again was later released in 1998 without the cast from this film. It was also followed by a Saturday morning cartoon series called All New Dennis the Menace. Another direct-to-video sequel called A Dennis the Menace Christmas was released in 2007 with different cast from both first and second films. Topic. Plot Dennis Mitchell Mason Gamble is a five-year-old boy who lives with his parents, Henry Robert Stanton and Alice Leah Thompson in Evanston, Illinois, and is the bane of next-door neighbor, George Wilson Walter Matow. One morning, George or Mr. Wilson, as Dennis calls him, pretends to be asleep in order to avoid dealing with Dennis. Dennis enters his bedroom, only to find him asleep with by his prescription medication on his nightstand, and thinks he is sick. To make the man feel better, Dennis flings an aspirin into his mouth with a slingshot, causing him to gag and spit the aspirin out, as Dennis flees home. When Dennis arrives home, his parents learn of the incident he had caused to Mr. Wilson and are both shocked, but because they both have to work, Alice has to take him to stay at Margaret Wade's house for the day. He is not too impressed by this, because Margaret is mean to him. When he arrives, he and Margaret, along with his best friend, Joey, venture into the woods to an abandoned tree house and intend to fix it up. Later, while getting paint from a high shelf in the garage, Dennis tries to grab his slingshot, which was taken away from him by Henry, and accidentally spills the paint on the floor. He then fervently attempts to vacuum it up, but ends up spilling a glob of it which splinters onto George's barbecue grill, while he's cooking chicken, and he tastes the paint and wood splinters as he eats it. That night, Dennis has a set of babysitters, Polly and her boyfriend, Mickey. He plays doorbell pranks on them and they retaliate by sticking a thumbtack on the doorbell and preparing water and flour to dump on the prankster. However, George goes over there to prove that Dennis was responsible for the paint on his chicken, despite the wishes of his wife, Martha, Joan Plowright, only to ring the doorbell, stick his thumb, and get water and flour dumped on him, much to Martha's amusement. The next morning, Dennis goes over to the Wilson's house to apologize for the events of the previous night, but finds himself playing with Mr. Wilson's dentures, losing the two front teeth down the drain, and replacing them with chiclets in the process. This gets noticed when George gets his picture taken for the newspaper. Meanwhile, a thief named Switchblade Sam Christopher Lloyd arrives in town and starts burglarizing people's houses, as well as stealing things outdoors and striking fear into children he meets. Henry and Alice have a difficult time getting people to watch Dennis while they both work. George and Martha are being charged with the task of doing so, as Henry and Alice are both called away on business trips on the same weekend. Martha loves Dennis as if he was her own grandson, as she and George never had children, and she enjoys telling Dennis a bedtime poem that her mother told her. Alternatively, George is further annoyed by him for spilling bath water on the bathroom floor, replacing his nasal spray with mouthwash, and his mouthwash with toilet cleanser, and even bringing Dennis's pet dog, Ruff, into the house for a while. George has been chosen to host the Summer Floriganza, a long-awaited summer event. He has been growing and nurturing a rare night-blooming orchid for about 40 years especially for it. Despite the investment, the flower dies shortly after it blooms. Alice's flight is delayed due to a thunderstorm forcing Dennis to stay with the Wilsons for the night of the party. Martha is understanding, but George is deeply dismayed about this. But, at her insistence, he eventually agrees to let Dennis stay outside for the party only with a firm warning to behave himself. He doesn't enjoy it much because the guests pinch his cheeks, so he distances himself from them. 
However, in his curiosity, he finds himself pushing the garage door button, causing it to open, knock over the dessert table, and make a huge mess. George sees it and angrily bans Dennis from the party. Whilst inside, Dennis hears Switchblade Sam robbing the house, then goes downstairs and finds George's gold coins missing from the safe. Just as the flower is about to bloom, he alerts George of the robbery, distracting everyone just long enough to miss the flower's brief blooming span. Furious about his 40-year investment gone to waste and the constant mishaps Dennis has caused as well as knowing nothing about the robbery, George uproots the plant and severely scolds Dennis by telling him that he is selfish and spoiled, that he has no use for him, that the flower blooming meant more to George than Dennis ever will, and that he does not want to see or know Dennis any more before telling his guests to leave. Heartbroken, Dennis flees on his bike, and rides off into the night. He then heads into the woods, where he eventually runs into Sam, who abducts him, intending to use him as a hostage. Henry and Alice arrive home soon after only to learn of their son's disappearance. They then contact the authorities and his friends to start looking for him. George, now feeling intense guilt and remorse about all the times he yelled at Dennis and what he had said, especially since he really had been robbed, joins in the search in his car, and everyone ends up looking for the five-year-old all night. Meanwhile, Dennis unintentionally but effectively defeats Sam by tying him up with a rope, setting him on fire twice, accidentally bludgeoning him several times, handcuffing him, and losing the key in a pot of baked beans amongst other things. He then returns to the Wilson's house the next morning with an injured Sam in the wagon attached to his bike, having also recovered Mr. Wilson's gold coins. Sam is then taken into police custody by an amused sheriff who had advised him earlier to leave town. Dennis and George make amends, and both the Mitchells and the Wilsons become close friends on better terms. That night, Alice tells the Wilsons that she does not have to travel out of town anymore and will stay to work on the local projects and Dennis can come to work with her since they have a daycare center. George scoffs at this saying he and Martha will be happy to continue watching him, explaining that he learned some things about children by saying to both Henry and Alice that kids are kids and they have to play by their rules, roll with the punches, and expect the unexpected. Around the same time, just as Dennis is still trying to get the flame out of his marshmallow, it lands on George's forehead. As the closing credits start to roll, Andrea, Alice's egotistical co-worker, finds Dennis sitting near the copy machine as she comes in to use it. He asks to press the button on it, but she arrogantly tells him that he doesn't know which button to press. Sure enough, he presses the print button and runs off with other workers, including Alice, looking on. The paper feeder sucks up Andrea's scarf, her head gets pinned face down on the scanner bed, and the machine relentlessly flashes its blinding light in her eyes, repeatedly copies her face, and spews out page after page of black and white photos showing her numerous agonized facial expressions as she screams and cries on the scanner bed, eventually getting herself free. Cast Mason Gamble as Dennis Mitchell, a mischievous five-year-old boy. Walter Matow as George Wilson, a neighbor and Martha's husband. Joan Plowright as Martha Wilson, George's wife. Christopher Lloyd as Switchblade Sam, a burglar. Robert Stanton as Henry Mitchell, Alice's husband and Dennis' father. Leah Thompson as Alice Mitchell, Henry's wife and Dennis' mother. Amy Sakasitz as Margaret Wade, Dennis' friend. Kellen Hathaway as Joey McDonald, Dennis' friend Paul Winfield as Chief of Police Ben Stein as Boss only as a cameo shot at a meeting Natasha Leon as Polly Devin Rattray as Mickey Hank Johnston as Gunther Beckman Melinda Mullins as Andrea Billy Bird as Edith Butterwell Bill Irwin as Edward Little Arnold Stang as the photographer Jeannie Russell as neighbor. Topic: Production notes. Mason Gamble won the role of Dennis Mitchell after beating out a reported 20,000 other children who had auditioned for it. The script was written to use certain references from Back to the Future, also starring Christopher Lloyd and Leah Thompson, and Home Alone, also written and produced by John Hughes and co-starring Devin Rattray. The film premiered on 25 June 1993. It is known simply as Dennis in the UK to avoid confusion with an unrelated British comic strip, also called Dennis the Menace, 
which also debuted in 1951. Topic: <laughs> Music. The film's music was composed by veteran composer Jerry Goldsmith, who was John Hughes' first and only choice to write the music score for it. The short-lived Big Screen Records label released an album of Goldsmith's score alongside the film in July 1993. La La Land Records issued the complete score in April 2014 as part of their expanded archival collection on Warner Brothers titles. Additionally, three old-time pop hits were featured in the film, Don't Hang Up, by the Orlans, Whatcha No Joe, by Joe Stafford from the 1963 album, Getting Sentimental Over Tommy Dorsey, and a String of Pearls by Glenn Miller. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Video game. The film also spawned a platforming video game for the Amiga, Super NES, and Game Boy platforms. It included stages based off Mr. Wilson's House, The Great Outdoors, and a boiler room, among others. Reception The film was a success at the box office. Against a $35 million budget, it grossed $51.3 million domestically and a further $66 million overseas to a total of $117.3 million worldwide. Despite generally negative reviews from film critics, on Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 28%, based on 25 reviews with an average rating of 3.9.10. The website's critical consensus reads. Walter Matthau does a nice job as Mr. Wilson, but Dennis the Menace follows the Home Alone formula far too closely." Roger Ebert gave the film two and a half stars out of four and wrote, "...there's a lot to like in Dennis the Menace. But Switchblade Sam prevents me from recommending it." Mason Gamble received a Razzie Award nomination for Worst New Star but also won, "...best youth actor leading role in a motion picture, comedy." at the 15th Youth in Film Awards. <laughs>